laughing at salad. I'm laughing while eating a salad. <laughs> that is going in the outtakes. I get to be in the outro, singing a little song. Welcome back to So Biased. So today is the final episode of the Connects dress. The dress is finished, so now it's time to do the Connects logo applique as well as a hat. So this is my first attempt at hat making and I'm relatively pleased with the results. It was pretty cool. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is print off the Connects logo. Uh, I'm using the Orca logo. They've gone through a few logo iterations, but the Orca I think is by far the most recognizable and the one that most people actually like the best. The others are kind of mm, schmeh. So I'm going to print off the logo. I'm going to cut out a bunch of satin to match the colors and then I'm going to embroider it together and then I'm going to embroider it onto the dress. And then I am making a hat and because it's a 1950s hat, I want to do a pillbox, but because it's a hockey hat, I am making it a hockey puck because I'm a nerd. And once that's all done, I'm going to pass it off to Robin, the person who I'm making this dress for and the person who had the idea in the first place. And we are going to be doing what has been dubbed the most aggressively Vancouver photo shoot of all time. So stay tuned and let's begin embroidering. So I started by printing off the Vancouver Canucks logo and I enlarged it so that it would be the size I wanted and then printed it off tiled because it wouldn't all fit on one piece of paper. At that point, I really carefully lined it up to make sure it would match completely. And then I cut out the borders with a pair of obviously paper scissors. I wanted a really sturdy background for the embroidery to sit on. So I started off by pinning this logo to a piece of just plain cotton, white cotton muslin, and then cutting it out so that all of the embroidery would have a nice sturdy backing and the top layers are satin. But first I apparently need to post it to Instagram because you can't neglect that. Then cutting out all of the white muslin, I cut out the entire logo on the muslin uh, just around the borders so that everything would have something sturdy to hang on to. And then after that, unpin the whole thing. And I bought this really nice dark blue satin for the Orca head, which is a much darker blue than the royal blue I have for the dress. So I pinned out the Orca head and then I cut it out up to where it overlaps with the white. The white that I got is really opaque so it won't show. So I have the white sitting over top of the dark blue. So I went as far down as the dark blue goes and then just cut across of that. You can see, pretty blue orca. Then I take the white satin for the tail and I cut out that whole geometric shape on the left hand side, um, as well as a little bit coming up towards the head. You can see there are three individual little triangles that sit on the body of the orca and those ones I cut out separately and I embroidered them on separately so that they're not part of the one big white tail piece that I'm cutting out here. But I cut out all the zigzaggy edges and when it lays out on top of the dark blue you can see all that jaggedy edge sitting out there and then it's going to be embroidered on with gray to get all those gray outlines that you see in the logo. So I pin the dark blue and the white satin onto the cotton backing and then uh, I tried using some tracer paper to trace all of these patterns on, but I had some difficulty. It was not particularly visible. So I got really, really faded lines, which was not my favorite. So I tried going in with a pencil, which did not show up very well, but it worked well enough that it would be covered up by the embroidery and I could still see the visible lines. So that was fine. So here's 
about three quarters of the way through the project. Here is kind of the original. Um, the eye was a bit of a challenge. I may have to clean that up afterwards and add a little more white. But I'm saving that final gray border. You can see it's uh, blue and then gray. Or on the white part, it's gray than blue than gray. So I did the gray and the blue, and then the last border of gray I'm gonna to use to actually attach to the gown. Um, so I have to applique a couple more pieces onto this. Oh, there's one more. One more little triangle that goes there. Clip the backing fabric to get rid of all of these puckers, and then we embroider it down to the actual gown. And oh my God, oh my God, embroidery is not my thing. I feel so envious for the people who are actually good at this because it's not me. Okay, I'm gonna zoom further out so it looks better because it's not great close up. Gonna embroider on these three triangles. There's one more here, embroider around there, and then it should be time to actually attach it to the dress. Woohoo! I have trimmed out the lining in the back um, just around some of the edges, which has given it a little more ease so it can lay flatter. And yeah, trimmed around most of the embroidery spots. And then I am going to attach it to the dress and that last gray border here, I'm gonna to use to attach to the dress itself. You can see the contrast between the dark blue and the royal blue from the dress. So that should be most of it. And it'll also add more definition to this. So you have a nice lighter border so you can actually see the definition of the orca. Uh, and then I might fix up the eye a little bit with some hand stitching because that turned out a little wonky. But these guys turned out really well. I'm really pleased. It looks like the connects. So yay! So the next step is making the hat. And I'm doing a 1950s style pillbox. I am basing some of the steps off of Angela Clayton's tutorial on making a pillbox hat and I'm going to link that in the description below. So I looked up the dimensions of a hockey puck and a hockey puck is three inches wide and one inch tall which is nice that that's really even. So I'm going to double that and just make it six inches wide and two inches tall for the hat. So I need to cut out a circle that is six inches wide and then I need to calculate the circumference and whatever the circumference is of a six inch circle I'm going to do that as a two inch strip. Actually, I'm going to do it as a four inch strip so I can fold it in half. And then that is going to be the dimensions for our hat. Who remembers how to calculate the circumference of a circle? Not me. I had to look it up. So uh, the circumference is the diameter times pi or the radius times two times pi. And so six times 3.14 is 18.84 inches. So I'm going to do 19 and a half inches just for some ease. So we have our rectangle cut out and part of the thing that I saw on a hockey puck is the sides have this texture to them, this kind of cross hatched texture. And I wanna add that here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do decorative stitches along the side. That's next. Oh my God, I love it. Hopefully you can see it here. It's kind of this back and forth stitch that I did. They did three lines of it and then folded in half. And it really actually looks like the texture on a hockey puck. I'm, I'm really pleased with this. Um, so next up, we are going to do some interfacing and some wiring to stiffen this guy up. And then we're gonna sew it shut. Super random sewing tip. If you have a needle that has gotten a bit dull and is like pulling on the fabric and will not go through, if you have one of these, and always wondered what the little strawberry was for, it's actually full of pumice. So you can just pin your needle or your pin or whatever through and just kind of run it through a few times. And I won't pull on the fabric anymore. It will sharpen it up. Next step, I cut out a two inch strip of a fairly heavy interfacing and then I sewed it just right close to the edge here. Then I threaded a wire right next to that line and pinned it in place. And now I'm gonna sew that wire all the way in. And then I'm gonna repeat that again here. I'm gonna sew a strip, I'm gonna sew close to the edge, then I'm gonna put in some wire and I'm gonna sew it so it stays in place. And then we're gonna flip it and sew it all together. So I'm using a kind of medium gauge wire. What is this? 
a 9.9 millimeter flux cord wire. So this is like construction wire. I'm gonna sew this channel, then I'm gonna make another channel here, put wire through that, sew that down, and yeah, then we're gonna bend this in half, right sides together, and then sew it together, and we will have the brim of the hat. Most of the hat brim is now done. I kind of screwed it up and realized I have the seam allowance on this side, so I need to attach it on this side, otherwise it will be asymmetrical. So we're gonna attach it on this side and have the seam facing down, which is okay. Um, also, in the interest of being extra, most of the hockey pucks in the NHL have the logo of the team on the top. So I cut out my circle here, and I'm gonna do an iron-on transfer of the logo onto here. It's backwards because this is just iron-on transfer, so I turn it upside down onto this guy and then iron it on so it will be facing the right way when I'm done. And uh, Nina, I'm kind of doing something. I'm, I'm a little busy. Can, can you stop wrecking the bed? Are you a crazy girl? Oh, look at the wig. Thump, 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 thump. Oh. Has it been raining and you haven't go, uh, gone out? Um, um, excuse me. Excuse me. I'm, I'm a little busy. Hi. Need to lick the camera? Yeah? <laughs> You're too cute. I finished off the iron-on transfer and ironed it down and let it cool. Always follow the instructions. This is supposed to be for t-shirt cotton, so I mean, it may be horrible, it may not work at all, it may be totally invisible, but let's see. Okay, that's terrible. Damn it. Just really hoping that would work. We're gonna use the other side. <laughs> For the top and we're not gonna have that transfer because that is janky looking and nope this side is now the top side <laughs> and we're not gonna have the logo on at all because that is not good okay top side and we are going to cut a cardboard piece normally it would be interfacing but I want something with a little more body so I'm gonna cut a piece of cardboard that is just slightly smaller than this and then I'm gonna sew it in uh, wrong side to wrong side because it's a circle and and the seam allowance will end up on the inside of the hat anyway so I'm gonna cut a circle here and then just sew it in place onto the circle and we will never speak of the logo because oh, oh, nope Next step on the hat is we need to sew the brim to the top and because it has the wire in it, I'm gonna use a zipper foot to avoid the wire because it's right on the edge here. So I'm going to pin it down. I'm probably gonna do this in segments just because this does really not wanna close because the wire is doing the things. So I'm gonna sew off half of it and then I'm gonna take the pins off and then I'm gonna pin the rest down. Sew that down. And then when that's done, I'm going to trim the wire and I'm gonna sew the ends together. And then I'm gonna flip it inside out or right side out. And theoretically, after that, we should have a hat and we will see how that goes. Hello everybody, I would like to introduce you to Robin. Hi everybody! So Robin is the person I made the dress for and what was the inspiration for the Canucks dress? Fully COVID boredom. <laughs> so this whole dress sort of walked into my head fully formed. I don't remember creating it, it just sort of suddenly existed in my head. I wanted a 50s pinup, super cute, super femme dress. Uh, that was a Canucks dress. I wanted something better to wear to games when games eventually happen again. Uh, and it and it was it was just a fantasy of mine. Uh, and I was just mentioning it to Mel, sort of randomly in a in a Zoom party. Yes. We had, and she was like, "That's great, and I will make it." And that was sort of the end of that. There was no like, "Can I? Do you think you could make this for me?" Nothing. I just. Just sort of I just offer it. I'm like, I can make the thing. <laughs> and I am ever so grateful because it's spectacular and super fun. And Robin is also starting her own YouTube channel. So tell us about your YouTube channel. 
Okay, so my my uh, YouTube channel will be about opera, disability, queerness, cats, and tea. So if any of those things are things you like, or the intersections of those things seem really cool and weird to you, then that is the corner of the internet to be, and I will see you there. The links will be in the description. Links in the description. And thank you for joining us on the channel. Thank you for making me this amazing thing. Okay, now let's go do some modeling and fancy drone footage. Well, that's it for the Vancouver Canucks project. I really hope you enjoyed it. It was a lot of learning for me. The embroidery in particular was was a thing. Don't know if I'm going to do machine embroidery again, or maybe I should just get better at it, because, hmm. Anyway, I have lots more projects coming up. I'm going to be part of the Home for the Holidays Challenge where I am making a holidays dress from the 1940s. It is a very famous dress. Uh, if you want to take a guess at what it might be, please comment below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please share it with your friends. Please comment on anything you enjoyed or anything you're working on. I'd love to see who's subscribing. I love to hear from subscribers and what you think of the video. Until then, stay happy and healthy. Please take care of each other and see you all soon. Bye! Please stay upright, please don't fall over. My well. woman laughing at salad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, I have to hold my head steady for that. <laughs> salad is so amusing! Yes, it's, it's a whole trope. Uh, like, you can, you can find so many stock images on the internet of white women laughing while holding salad. So it's a whole oh, okay. thing. We're laughing at nothing.